One was um, Eureka. It's actually she was the first, um, first and only African American female officer um, in the city of the Falls Church Police Department. Wow, that's the word. Go, girl. I'm honored to be on your show today and to be able to share my story. I don't take it lightly at all. And I okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna start off by, by putting out. I'm not good at stuff. But I'm not good at talking about me. I can talk about a whole bunch of other stuff. I know. I was about to say, let them take their phone or their screen free. Froze. I'm going to say it's Angie and Renee. It's Angie and Renee, but not Renee. It is Angie well, no, and Renee. Not. Oh, my. for this platform. Hello. Hey, Facebook. Hey, Facebook. Hey, YouTube. It's Angie. And Renee. Uh-uh. You can't hear me? I can hear you. <laughs> 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 all right y'all so we are here tonight and um so so excited um we just have these wonderful guests they have they are coming back with us um they were here was it a year or two ago something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. yes however but I, we were so excited we was like oh they gotta come back on so we are going to talk about it but before we start there i don't know renee do you have a wow factor no, not today. Okay, well, Sorry. that's okay. That's all right, because guess what? We have a surprise. We do, because it is still <gasps> Women's History Month. Right. Yes, yes, yes. So, you know, um, women, we are out here. We are doing great, great things. Um, and we are celebrating. It is the month of March, the month of March, and we're still in March. Um, Women's History Month, and we are going to honor tonight the co-founder of Black and Missing Foundation. Yes. So these wonderful ladies, the co-founders, um, like they are doing great great things they yes. are bringing awareness to something that has been left in the dark for a long long time yeah. renee your flowers um i just want to say i love these ladies they are so approachable and they are i, t I told them like i'm so proud of them 
Um, I am so proud of them. I wrote the Kelly Clarkson show. I was like, you have to get these people on. Get these ladies on. I'm serious. I did. I did. I was just like, because the question was, do you know um, a woman, women in your community that are making a difference? And I was like, I do. And I wrote and I was like, can I, I say, is it okay? And it was like, yeah. I said, okay. Um, but I mean, you name it. And I think that uh, you all are bringing awareness to something that has been in the dark for so long. And just to see that now you're getting your flowers because you all have definitely done the legwork. I'm, this is just the beginning. And go ahead, Angie. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that sums it up. I mean, you know, we got royalty in the house with us tonight. And just- We are like, family. We're family. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. But I will say this, like, I am just so, um, I'm grateful to know you and I'm just grateful for you and just, um, you know, really taking, you know, the tragedy and turning it into triumph, right? Yes. And not just, um, you know, you took something and then you said, okay, I want to help other people. I want to pour into other people. I want to, you know, bring awareness to this because it's just being lost. And so we truly, truly do appreciate you. Thank well, you. we appreciate you too. Thank you so much for having us and for always using your platform to spread awareness about this issue because that's the key. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't know that, you know, people are missing from our communities at an alarming rate, then nothing's being done. So thank you for using your platform and for always supporting us in our efforts to find us. Yes, absolutely. yes, absolutely. Yes. Because oh, I, right. I wear your inbox out. I know they'd be like, if Renee don't stop sending this message, <laughs> no, 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 this no, person's no, missing. <laughs> no, keep doing it. Uh, Natalie and I, we're the fire starters. And sometimes we are not aware of some cases because we are national and they're coming left and right. And we want to make sure that we highlight these cases because if not us, who? And it's all of our responsibility. It's law enforcement, it's the media, and it's the community. And when all of those are working together, we are some powerful people, you know, to, to bring our missing home. Yes, yes. indeed, yes. indeed. So I, I have a question. I know recently everyone saw in the news, and I think I saw you, Dorica, speaking about it um, with the Gabby Petito, with her being missing and the national headlines and how it just the whole situation stayed in the headlines. Um, and I think I saw you speaking on it because people were saying that in our community, we don't get that type of, um, of news or press. Um, what do you all say to people about that? Is it more that we can be doing? Well, I think, you know, with the Gabby Petito and every so often we get those cases that just dominate the, the national news. And uh, the late great Gwen Eiffel, she coined it best, missing white woman syndrome. So we can all name yeah. the Natalie Holloway, the Lacey Peterson, the Chandra Levy, the Gabby Petito. And those names just roll off my tongue. But if you ask anyone out there to name one person from the black and brown community that has garnered that national mainstream media, it does not exist. So what we're trying to do is even the playing field, less is more, less of one race and more of everyone that's missing, it greater the chances of a reunion. And we understand that not every case is going to make the five and 10 o'clock news cycle, but we do want authorities, law enforcement to take our cases seriously. We want the media to spotlight our missing and we want the community to see something and say something. Right. right. And, and to add to that, you know, we want to make sure that our missing our household names too. As Derricka just mentioned, can anyone name a black or brown person of color that has gotten that national media coverage? And most people can't. No. And we're disappearing at an alarming rate for so many reasons. Yeah. And media coverage is vital because, one, it alerts the community that someone is missing and we could all be looking for them. But most importantly, it adds pressure to law enforcement to add resources to the cases. Mm -hmm. And no law enforcement agency wants to be embarrassed. Right. So they are adding those resources because the community is upset and there's an outcry. You know, as advocates for the organization or for these families, 
We're trying to change the narrative that these are missing mothers and fathers. They're valuable members of our community. And when we first started, only 7% of missing persons of color got media coverage. Wow. How alarming is that? So we are trying to do a better job in keeping them in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Wow. wow. Oh. oh my gosh. Um, talk to us about your HBO special. Wow. Um, yeah, I don't know where to start. I mean, it's just an amazing experience for one, for Soledad O'Brien to recognize us and the work that we're doing and to just come alongside us, um, you know, to show and to, it's really providing a bird's eye view of the challenges that we face, as well as families face and getting law enforcement to add resources to the case, to get the media to cover these cases. And, you know, it's also helping us to solve them. And it has been very receptive by the community. Um, they were awarded, well, we were awarded, you know, the NAACP award, the Spirit Award. So it's really receptive. But most importantly, we're seeing change. People are contacting us like law enforcement offices, officials, the media, they're saying, how can we do a, jo a better job? Even we were called to the White House. Now, how amazing is that? What? Our lawmakers recognized it yes. and said, okay, we want to work alongside you to bring about change. So yes. that's what the docuseries is about. It's powerful, but yes. it's all of us to act, change laws, change policies, to protect you know, those most vulnerable in our community. So we're grateful for the opportunity and we're grateful for everyone who watched it. And if you haven't, please go to HBO Mac and ch Max and check it, check it out. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 yes, and just to respond to what Natalie said, this is so much bigger than us. Right. Um, the, you know, we started the organization because we saw a need and for everyone that's out there listening, in order to make a change or to, to correct an issue in your community, you must be willing to be the change. Mm -hmm. And so we saw an mm -hmm. issue and with my background in law enforcement and Natalie's background in public relations, those are the two critical professions needed. So we're the fire starters, but this is a movement because it is much larger than us. You know, yeah. we're just on assignment. Yes. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's absolutely wonderful. Because you could have, you know, I'm sure that there was probably some snags going along the way and you all just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And that just says a lot. Um, I, I just I can't even say how much I really appreciate it, like because yeah. it's definitely needed. We appreciate it. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> There's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears in yeah. nearly 14 years um, wow. doing this. But when we look at how these families, you know, just not knowing it, think about this, all the listeners out there, think about this. Imagine if you misplaced your car keys or your cell phone, your anxiety is through the roof. You're panicking. Now multiply that times a million. It's unexplainable. Right. It's undescribable. You know, for families not knowing, not knowing if their loved one is hungry, if they're being mistreated, mm -hmm. if they're cold, if they're going to walk through the front door again. So right. we have to be that champion of change and, and be able to help them. And that is the inspiration, you know, to continue. You know, when we started, we said, if we find one person, we've done our job. But we realized that it's much more than that. These families become our family. Right. Yeah. And we can't give up on them. Think about it. They have many of these people, these families, we're meeting them at the worst times in their lives. Right. Because they have a missing loved one. So we are giving them that hope and letting them know that we are walking alongside them. And they need that because many of them want to give up. Yeah. And I mean, we have doors slammed in our face. I've reached out to media outlets and they're not interested in the story. I can't just give up. Derica can't just give up. We have to keep advocating for these families because we are their last resort most times. So it's a labor of love. Is it tough? Absolutely. Of course. Thanks. But we we have to keep going because they need us. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, 
we do need you um, in the community and speaking out. Um, you all posted two young ladies that are missing in District Heights um, yesterday. And my niece, they go to my great niece school. Mm -hmm. And the parents were just saying that nobody would listen to them. Like they have tried to get the case on the news. They couldn't do it. And when I look and saw you all posted, I was like, yes, like I know they're going like I know something's going to come from it. But yeah. what you know, how do people reach you if something like that happens? Like you said, the news just they don't want to touch the story. How do how do people reach out to you? And um, is it certain things they need in order to get their their um, loved one um, on your page? We just need them to have a police report and we actually coach them through. So we get cases a variety of ways. Families reach out to us directly on our website, BAMFI.org. We have a missing persons intake form that families can fill out. We actually have a missing persons checklist just so they know the A through Z on what to do if you ever have to experience you know, this tragedy. Um, and, and law enforcement reaches out to us. We have our media partners and community members. They bring these cases to our attention. So with those two young girls, Janiah and Alea, uh, one of the law enforcement officials that we are in contact with brought it to our attention and we immediately acted on it and we're still working with the families uh natalie's working with our media partners we're working with local and federal officials um to try to help you know find these little girls they're 13 years old yeah. and wow. you know it's been 10 days wow. I'm a mother. i have a 12 year old daughter you know i look at these babies and, and I'm thinking like, oh, my goodness, they can be anywhere. And so that's where the community comes into play as well. We don't need for people to just like our posts. We need for you right. all to be our digital milk carton. Share, yeah. these posts, share these flyers, make them go viral because someone knows something. And we just need that someone to say something to end the nightmare for these families. Right. Yeah. And to add to that, um, you mentioned they didn't get any media coverage. Mm -hmm. We have media partners right here in D.C., and when we called, they did their jobs. And that's why media partnerships are so important. Yes. You know, the families are on the Black News Channel tonight. They were on NBC wow. um, yes. 4. They were on WUSA 9. Yes. And hopefully, you know, we're also pitching it to other networks, but it's because we have those partnerships. Yes. And we were invited to those same newsrooms where they asked, how can we do a better job and how can we partner with you? So Good. the families ran into ups, obstacles, but when they called us, I know. Yes, when they called us, <laughs> we have those relationships already. Yes, yeah. yeah. and we have those relationships with law enforcement too. Because again, as Nally is working on that angle with our media partners, we're able to make those phone calls to our partners in the federal arena to help dedicate resources to help yeah. you know the local jurisdiction because we understand that missing persons is not considered a priority per se you know it's not considered a crime so when you look across the country with law enforcement there's not a lot of resources dedicated to the missing persons unit because they don't view that as high crime Mm. And let me add, I didn't say that arrogantly, but I say that with pride because we no, no, have no, right. yeah. 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 those relationships. Let me tell you, it's, it's calling every day. Yes. And, hey, I need, you know, let me speak to the assignment um, news director. Let me speak to the news yeah. director. And then they're reaching out to us. So. We're right. grateful for all of the media partnerships. That and Natalie, do not apologize for that because it is, I mean, going hard. It's not arrogant. It's the truth. That's I mean, right. Yes. It's the truth. No, I, I just yes. wanted to clarify. Yes. <laughs> right. you know, it's hard work. It may look easy, but it's yes. not. <laughs> I know. We know it's not. Yeah, we know it's not. No, because if it was easy... You know, that's something like you said, anybody could call. And I know the family had tried to 
get things done. But like you said, you all work to build that relationship. Right. And I know for me, I didn't take it as being um, arrogant. Yeah, me because I know, you know, you all said this was 14 years where you were building. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah. this isn't something that just like fell in your lap. Like this is work. Yeah, um, that you did. Is. And you're getting you're seeing the fruits of your labor. So I I didn't take that as being arrogant. Like no, this is something no. that no, like, <laughs> yeah, no. I, I was uh, you <laughs> yes. know, you have to spin on it, but no, <laughs> no, no, no. not arrogant at all. No. But there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. That's right. That's you know, right. so you're confident in what it is that you all are doing. Yeah. Like yeah. you built those relationships. Those happen. That happens over years. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. but yeah, we, I mean. Yeah, that's just something. So, okay, so we know how they can get in touch with you. They can, um, you all are on Instagram, mm -hmm. uh, Facebook, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, all the things. Mm -hmm. and, if they, and, and going to our website, they can actually hit all of our platforms. So, B A M F I dot O R G. Um, and anyone out there listening who chooses not to go to our website and they have information about one of our missing persons yeah. that's on our website, we encourage you to even call us. 1-877-972-2634. You know, because, so again, check out who's missing in your community. And if you see something, say something. We understand that there is a lack of trust when it comes to our community and law enforcement. So oftentimes right. we get those tips and we're sharing that information with law enforcement so they can further follow up because number one, we're relatable. We look like our community and we don't care who you are. We just want right. the information that you have again, to end this nightmare for these families that we're serving. These families are our families. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Amen. That that yeah. is awesome because I mean you're absolutely right. Like in our communities, we you know, we've seen it so many times as to where we're the, the victim, we call the police, but then we end up getting in trouble. So, you know, you're you're kind of afraid to say anything. And we and you know, it's great that we do have that buffer. Um, and you know the, the language to speak, you know the way to approach, and sometimes you know, being in that in those shoes and being mm -hmm. so emotional things can get lost in translation like right. you have a checklist yeah. so you know what it is to do right. so, absolutely yes 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 so you we don't have to be at this alone y'all yes <laughs> yeah. right yes, and angie you said something very important too mm -hmm. our community our children our girls aren't seen as victims mm -hmm. and so if you're not seen as, as a victim, no one really cares. They don't have that sympathy or empathy for you. Yeah. So we can change that narrative. Right. So that people can care more. You yes. know, many, many times when our children are reported missing, they're reported missing as a, a runaway. So people yes. are saying, well, they left voluntarily. I mean, we yeah. get messages or comments or she's fast. Well, what does that mean? And why does right. it matter? Why does this child is on the street. And we know right. within 24 to 48 hours of this child being on the street, they're going to be propositioned for sex. Mm. And they're part of sex trafficking. So even within our own community, yeah. we have biases and we make assumptions and mm. we need to look at this issue holistically. There's so many problems around housing, economic development, education, that impacts why a person goes missing. Right. So instead of, you know, making these comments, let's bring about change. Amen. Absolutely. And if I could just add one thing, one point that Natalie uh, said about how our children are seen as, they're not seen as, as victims. You know, the Urban Institute con uh, conducted research and they interviewed traffickers and the traffickers said that they would rather target our black girls and women because they know law enforcement wouldn't look for us. And wow. they know if they were caught, they would get less jail time. What? 
So we have to protect our community. We have to, you know, use our voice, even voting, making sure you get those right elected officials, in those positions that can change the laws on how cases such as this is handled. And as Natalie stated, we get cases all the time where these children are labeled as runaways. Lately, we've been getting cases where families, unbeknownst to them, they're filing reports and they think they're filing missing persons reports. But when we go to vet and verify, we find out that the police just give them a case number and it's listed or classified as for information purposes only, which means that it's not an active missing persons case and there's no resources dedicated to finding that person that's missing. But these families don't know that. Is there anything that someone can do to... Um to check to see if things were filed correctly? I, so, I had no idea. That so that is one of the things that we do because in order for us to even, you know, take these cases on, and, and again, as Natalie said, we've been building our partnerships with our media partners for nearly 14 years. And so we have to make sure before we refer any case to them that there is a police report on file. So okay. we're working in the background to ensure everything is accurate before it even gets shifted to our media partners. Um, but holistically across the board, that is one of the one of our fights, you know, that we want all cases to be handled the same in the same manner, because what we're finding is that there is no two departments operating the same, right? Mm -hmm. So in some jurisdictions, families can file their loved ones missing immediately, where in other jurisdictions, they must wait 24 hours before they can file a missing persons report. But we all know that the first 24 to 48 hours are the most critical moment. Yes. So we need to change that. We need to change that classification of runaway, get rid of that term, they're missing. Yes. You know, right. so these are children and we need to yeah. find them. Uh, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done. But I think, you know, we've worked extremely hard and, and now building these partnerships and these relationships, we see that the narrative is starting to change and mm -hmm. we're going to continue to fight this fight where at some point we hope that Black and Missing Foundation dies a natural death where right. all cases are handled. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. Amen. Um, you, you all, I don't know if this is something that you all have considered or thought about. Um, is there any, are there any laws that can be passed or you all feel like something needs to change, mm -hmm. um, to make a difference? Is there anything legally that can be done as far as laws or in the works? Absolutely. I mean, there are so many laws and we have had these discussions with lawmakers. We were on the Hill testifying about this. The first law that needs to be changed is the way that um, they identify our missing. We don't know, I mean, we do know that 40% of all persons missing are of color, but we wow. also know that the numbers are much higher right. because Latinos are classified as whites. And we do know that 24% of them believe that they're black. So let's change the, the, you know, the reporting structure because it's flawed. We really don't have a true number. And that, that way resources can be allocated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to these families, to programs and to our community. So that's the first step that we need. And again, looking at this holistically and providing the resources so that people don't go missing in the first place. I mean, mental yes. health mm -hmm. plays a huge role in our community. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about it. No. And since the pandemic, we have seen an increase in our cases. You would think that people are at home and less people would go missing. We've seen more people going missing. Really? Yes. Well, you got to think also that there's a correlation between missing persons and domestic violence. And so while everyone is stuck in the home, going to work, going to school is their outlet. Now they're stuck in the home with their abuser and they're looking for love in all the wrong places. And so one of the questions that we ask is how can a stranger enter your home without coming through your front door, or your window? And that's through those devices. 
Yeah. And they all have a chat feature. They so there's a chat feature on there. The predators can chat with your child mm. or with you or with anyone. So again, just being mindful. And there are so many things that we can do. We need to get out and vote and vote yes. for leaders that will change laws to protect our communities. Indeed. Oh my goodness. Indeed. Ooh. That is, I, I say that so often. Yes, she does. Can't wait for the four years for the presidency. That's mm -hmm. not where it stops. Yes. We have to vote on our, our state and our, yes. our um on our local level within yes, your um, not just within your state, but within your county, within yes. your county, within your district. Those votes matter. Those yes. are the people who are or who are the ones that are going to represent you, and you want them to really truly represent you. Yes, That's what they want, and we have to get out of this thing of oh, because they're Republican, oh, because they're Democrat. Mm -hmm. Listen to what they're saying, yes, and then you also have to be a part of it. Learn what's going mm -hmm. on in the campaigns. Go out here and listen mm -hmm. and let your voice be heard. I don't like what's going on. So I want you, I want you to hear me. We have to go. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. 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 Get out and vote. Yes. Um, so tell us, someone has a book out. Um, and the book is, is at, I love the book. I love Thank the book. You. Tell us about finding Sierra. How did how did that come about? The concept and what's what's the message? So I've always wanted to write a book. That's been a long time dream of mine. And again, serving as the first black police officer for the city of Falls Church. I wanted to show that, number one, <laughs> thank you, representation matters, right? And, and being able to utilize my experience and my background to bring awareness to parents, to educators, what our children are facing. This is something that you know, we see and it's growing every single day. Um, I was very strategic, even in the illustrations of the book, because I want what you see in the book to be a representation of what these police departments yes. need to reflect that diversity. Mm -hmm. I wanted parents to understand the dangers that are out there that we have to pay attention and that it can happen to anyone if you're yes. not mindful. And also, again, how it takes all of us you know, to try to end these cases, you know, solve these cases. So it was very strategic um, and even it's personal as well. So even the uh, character in the book, Officer Carlise, my daughter's middle name is Carly. Mm -hmm. So again, I just wanted to show that representation. And I think it's so important because, you know, that literacy, you know, reading and, and showing kids that, you know, again, representation matters, seeing a book and can see themselves in it, but also to educate them on the dangers that are out there. Yeah. Wow. So what can, okay, so uh, outside of the book, so we all need to get the book. So if it's for your, your children, if it's for mm -hmm. your grandchildren, your godchildren, uh, nieces, nephews, friends, neighbors, woes, foes. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> it's for every. It's for everyone. It is for yeah. everyone. And one of the goals that I have is to get book sponsors because I want to be able to donate 500 books to the students mm -hmm. in the DMV. Okay. Um, that is something that is very important for me. Um, I'm actually going to do a surprise pop-up at a school uh, because I do have one book sponsor that um, provided a, a donation for me to be able to do a pop-up at a school. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do a pop-up tomorrow and, and give the kids books and do a signing and give them like a little gift. Um, so again, that is very near and dear. And then there's a youth conference that's going on that we had another um, sponsor to do. So we, we have those books that are mm -hmm. going to go to those youth. But it's so important um, because this is a message and what I love hearing is the feedback from the children. 
Yes. So I like to connect with them so that, you know, some parents have recorded their children, giving them the feedback on the book and they will play it for me. I've even had kids at the book signing that have purchased the book and just brought it in for the signing to tell me what they learned from the book. So again, that really touched my heart because I think You know, we have to, again, protect our babies at all costs. We have to Mm -hmm. to be real with them. You know, we have to be real. And it was interesting because an adult saw the book, read it, loved the book, was like, oh, my God, I can't believe you went there in the book, you know, to Sierra. And I'm like, you know what? If we don't teach our children, we're going to teach them. That's right. So they're seeing everything anyway online. Right, right. Yeah, right. and that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is, oh my goodness. I well, let me tell you about it in a constructive, you know, in a constructive manner, in that open mm-hmm. setting where we could talk about it. Mm-hmm. Right, right. I think that's that's good, and that also will help. Um, it can help the parents or whoever's mm-hmm. reading the book, you know, to the child or with the child. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that that will help as well. So, okay, so. Outside the book, because we all gonna get the book. What are some tips? What are some tips until we get our books? <laughs> tips that you can um, give to um, children. We don't have. I don't think we have any children on here, but parents who are on here and godparents can share with their children. Mm-hmm. Well, I think uh, for parents, I think we have to stop being our children's friend and be their parent. Come on, everything starts at home. Okay, Um, we have to be that nosy parent again. You, what you're doing and the steps that you're taking is life saving. It's either you get to them or the streets and the people out there outside. Um, And listen, listen to your children because they have a lot to say. And and oftentimes we as parents we try to over talk them, and we really shut them down when we're trying to talk over them. And and. You know, I I had to learn even with my 12 year old, like she comes home, she has a lot to say and I have to listen to her. And then, you know, she told me the other day, she says, you know, mommy, I can tell you anything. And I want her to be that way. Now, sometimes she doesn't tell me something and I'm like ready to fly out the window. (laughs) I have to keep my composure because I always want that open between me and my children. And I never want them to turn elsewhere. Amen. And we also ask parents to create a fictitious account on social media and see if you can befriend your child. And people think that the Mm -hmm. grooming process is immediate. We had a case last year where this young lady was a gamer and she was talking to a predator. He was grooming her for two years. And she shared information and they had this very sophisticated system. He would send her messages. She would read it. It would delete. (gasps) And it was very, very sophisticated. And her parents were so heartbroken that they didn't know that she was talking to this man who ultimately paid someone a thousand dollars to come pick her up and took her from Atlanta to Texas. And they did all sorts of things. Then he sent her to Connecticut. But it's just, you know, being, as Derricka said, being that nosy parent. And again, see if you can chat with them and they become comfortable with you. And you'll be surprised the information that they would share. And what we're also learning in these chats, the predator is saying, you don't have to listen to your parent or your mother was wrong for doing that. I wouldn't do that to you. So these children are vulnerable. They need, yeah. you know, to they need confidence. Sometimes they need that reassurance. And these predators are telling them that. And they believe that they're friends. You know, we're in a society where everybody is our friend on social media and they really are not. Right. Wow. And I think the last point that I would like to add to what Natalie stated is that human trafficking is preventable. Mm, it right. is preventable these predators are preying on the vulnerable they're preying mm. on these children with low self-esteem yeah. um, just all of those factors that factor in the poverty but it is preventable and it starts with us the education the awareness the love the support and and also 
it's important for everyone to know that when someone goes missing, mm -hmm. the person who goes missing is not the same person who returns home. Wow. Because yeah. you don't know what person has endured while they're right. not there. And so those additional resources are needed for that individual that went missing as well as the family because it is a traumatic experience. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes it is. Um, I remember from the previous show that you all said that it's imperative to have a current picture um, of your children, your family, your loved ones, um, the license plate number. Um, what are some key things that you all ask for if someone contacts you about their loved one being missing? What are key things that they should, should we should all have? Well, I know that Natalie's going to chime in, but one thing I tell families not to do. <laughs> so, you know, what we're seeing is that families are being preyed on. So when law enforcement, they're not taking these cases seriously, families take matters into their own hand. They're creating their own flyers. They're putting their personal information out there. And yes. so these scammers are mm -hmm. contacting them, you know, asking for ransom. And these families are desperate. We've had families to lose their entire life savings. We've had oh. families to lose their homes. Because again, you... You can't even fathom the thought of your yeah. child, your yeah. brother, sister, your parents going missing oh, and gosh. you're getting that phone call and someone saying, I know where your loved one is, but in order for me to tell you, you have to pay me X amount of money. And sadly, that has been happening. It's even happening with the case that we're highlighting with the two teens out of Maryland. You know, yes. it, it, they talked about it on uh, with our partners on the news, but we also talked to the families and we created the flyers for them so they would no longer have to keep circulating the flyers that they originally created because right. um, we want to get that awareness out there. Yeah. And you mentioned pictures. Um, you know, we all have our biases and stereotypes. We get pictures of people being at the club or very inappropriate and, you know, we all, within a couple of seconds, make a judgment about a person just That's by right. looking at the picture. Mm -hmm. So That's we right. ask family members to have, I hate to say it, but a headshot, something really simple. Mm -hmm. So because we don't want people to look at it and say, yeah, they're from that community. They are getting what they deserve. Mm -hmm. Again, wow. we need to say their names. We need to, to show that they're valuable members of our communities their mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, grandparents, our neighbors that are missing. And no matter what they look like mm -hmm. or what happened with, you know, in their life, we need to look for them and we need to try to find them because the narrative is, especially with a child, no one is going to miss them, but their parent, uh. you know, or certain society, you know, certain places, no one is going to miss them but their family member. No, we're going to miss them all right. because this is an issue that affects our nation. Yes. And it's an American issue. Yes. And race should not be a barrier. That's to right. Law enforcement assistance and to media coverage. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, our community getting involved. Amen. And I'm going to make a point with that picture with law enforcement, I want to take a moment and hold them accountable yeah. because Natalie and I get cases all the time. And what really frustrates us is when families do provide law enforcement with a photo and they decide that they want to take it upon themselves and use a mugshot. And it really <sighs> and desensitize the fact that, again, this is a right. valuable member of our community. This is someone's son, daughter, yes. sister, mother, father. So this is another battle that on the outside, you know, people are not seeing that we're fighting for these families to even get law enforcement to change the picture on the flyers that they create. Uh. Hmm. Yeah, I, wow. But listen, don't lose hope. I know it's overwhelming. <laughs> but it's, hope. it's about change. I know it's overwhelming. <laughs> yes. But think about it. We have the resources to do the African American community. 
we have the most spending power than any other yeah, community. Right. Come on. Right. Right. Use it to bring about change. Yes. You know, and, and it, it's it's an overwhelming experience. We feel overwhelmed at times. These families feel overwhelmed. But with conversation like yours, it brings about change. And that's what we need. Awareness is key. Yes. And really you, the both of you look so sad right now. Look, Natalie and I, we're like all happy. But I'm going to tell you, we're also relentless too because, you know, there's like two sides to us. I'm telling you right now, when I'm on the phone with law enforcement, <laughs> it's not this in some cases, you know. <laughs> Right. with the media she's like she's got to keep calling and and i appreciate that because you know just a little inside family to family um yeah. now it started early so you know i don't have to worry about her calling my house early to wake me up at five <laughs> 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 sleep and i'm like Email. Yes. I was like, I can't text. Let me email it. Me and you, oh Natalie. Gosh, Ladies, I hate to do this, but I have to put you all on mute for a minute. Continue because I have a media partner that wants to run a story about these young ladies. Okay, so just oh, go man. ahead. I'm just going to yes. put it on mute, yes. but I'm still here. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm going to okay. talk. Look, <laughs> like said, she's the early bird, right? So she yes, and she used to call. And I'm like Natalie. Okay, she's like, you gotta slip your life away. Meanwhile, I'm the late owl. I can't call her late, so I see Angie and I. We're the same, right? Look That's it. it. <laughs> that is it. <laughs> and I'm the early it, bird. It, it works. It, it really works. It balances out. So. Yes, yeah. and that's what we do, balance each other out. Yeah, me and Natalie are going to have to get together. Yes. Yeah, you, got, you guys can call each other, okay? <laughs> that's right. And and I can... got you at 10, 11 o'clock, girl, I'm up. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. They can do breakfast. We'll do brunch. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Oh, oh, my man. Goodness. No, those faces, those faces were not sadness. Those faces were frustrating, yeah. frustration and ready to fight. Yeah, because, yeah, you know, but you oh. know, we it's it, it is it's so much work, you know, that that needs to be done. But you know, we've come a long way, and again, yes. we we've, we've made great mm -hmm. strides with with partnerships, working with law enforcement, working with media, and getting our community involved. Because when we started the organization, our community didn't realize that this was an issue. Right. When they turned the televisions on, they didn't see anyone that looked like them. So mm -hmm. you're starting to see, again, things shift. And mm -hmm. again, we're going to continue to fight, um, you know, because we have to. Yeah. You know, it's in our DNA. That's right. Yeah. So let me ask you this. How can people help you to fight? Other than take our earrings off and punch them. <laughs> <laughs> well, a couple of things. <laughs> we don't want that. Yes. <laughs> we don't want that yet. <laughs> Not yet. <All> right. <laughs> but you know what? We need no. our community to help us financially. Okay. We have been able to bring home close to 400 people. Yes. Just on a shoestring budget and Derek and I pounding the pavement. Yes. Think about the financial support that we can get to scale up where we can hire, mm -hmm. you know, the investigators, right. the counselors, the therapists, mm -hmm. you know, to help these families because the need is great. Can you imagine how much it costs to print flyers? A hundred flyers is very expensive. Yes, I'm it sure. is. You know, and we need to, um, to provide these families with resources. Yes. And Follow us on social media. You just gave out the handles. Yeah. Don't just like it. Help it to go viral. Yes. That, people don't realize that's what made Gabby Petito one of the one of the reasons why her case went viral because people were involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They just didn't sit back. People were flying all over the country to help find her. We can't even get someone to come out in DC to look for somebody. Right. Exactly. So yeah. let's, you know, we need boots on the ground. We need our community to help us. We can't do this ourselves. That's and right. And for those elected officials, I mean, think about this, you know, if they ask, well, what are you guys doing for us? We are providing a service to your community. 
Yeah. You know, we are a national organization providing a service. We're filling in the gaps when even law enforcement in, in cases oftentimes is not dedicated to it or trying to, you know, drum up that support with media partners to to help, you know, with these cases. So being able to earmark, think about if all, you know, every county or every city, those politicians earmark a thousand dollars. I mean, that goes a long way for resources, for investigations, for mm -hmm. flyers, for the searches. And, you know, and the list goes on and on, you know, for those reunifications, because we have those as well. I mean, think yeah. about when someone is missing from Atlanta, as Natalie stated, they're found in Texas. Some of these families don't have the resources yeah. right. to even travel there. And so they will reach out and we help them. Yeah. And our services are free. We do not charge a dime. We work full time yeah. jobs. Yes. Both time. And wow. but we are dedicated again, to helping find our missing Amen. and to bring them home. But we cannot do this work alone. Yeah. We, we really need to scale up mm -hmm. um, and bring home way more people. And we can only do that through financial support. All right, y'all. Y'all heard it. So yes. get those dollars. Yes. And people can donate on your website, correct? Absolutely. Yes. They can okay. go to BAMFI.org. Like yeah. Derricka said, we are, you know, we work full times. So we're not taking a salary from the organization, mm -hmm. but, you know, all of the money goes to these families. Mm -hmm. So what about businesses? Um, maybe you can have businesses that may partner, might um, do, um, make print flyers for free or, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. yeah. some and that's something that we're also looking at. We want to expand where we can have those uh, satellite offices, especially in those uh, cities and states where we've identified where persons of color are going missing and creating those partnerships with those brick and mortar where family can turn to go pick up those flyers from that location. Mm -hmm. um, because oftentimes we are you know, reaching out to the Staples, the Kinkos, all of those uh, mm -hmm. businesses to get these flyers printed, for families to either pick up or if they don't have the means to even get there, we would have them delivered to their front door. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are some of the, I'm sorry, Renee. I, I just, don't lose your thought, but you okay. said that some of the pinpoint um, have something in the cities where a lot of the people in our community are going missing. Um, are there certain cities where, or, or states where it's like, this is like, these numbers are just like a mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we've seen an uptick in Baltimore, in Chicago, in Detroit, in Atlanta, in Dallas. And those are just five areas um, that I've named. But they're pretty much all over the country. But we definitely know that there's an uptick in these areas. Philadelphia. And, wow. and also New York. Wow. Yeah. Those and, those. and I also want to add that we need a grant writer. There's grant funding out there. Okay. Um, and we need, if you have anyone that's listening or you know of a really great grant writer, okay. you know, join us. Um, we're hiring for a grant writer to okay. help us secure some of that, you know, the funding. Come on. We need grant writers. Mm -hmm. That was the question I was going to ask Renee. Like, what are the cities? Um, in the states that um, where there's the uptick in that. So, yes, mm -hmm. we need grant writers. We need money. We need uh, businesses that want to partner to be able to give um, fund some of these services. Mm -hmm. um, we need our community to get involved. Yes. Just because you are not affected by it does not mean that you need to turn a blind eye. And that's what we hear all the time. You know, a flyer came across my desk. I don't know that person. You may not know them, right? But someone within your network might. Yes. Who share yes. the flyer? It doesn't cost anything to yes. share a flyer yes. again to help it go viral because all it takes is one person to come That's forward right. with information that can help find them, mm -hmm. but most importantly, provide answers for families that are desperately searching for their missing loved one. That's mm -hmm. right. And, and and they say that it doesn't affect them. They don't know them. It does affect affect them. Absolutely. Because later, if we don't stop it, mm -hmm. it could affect them later. One of their loved ones may. Yeah, that's too. right. 
We need to get, we need to stop it. Absolutely. And we just encourage everyone to visit our website and join our community so they can stay up to date what's going on. And if we're coming to a city near them, you know, but we we put out alerts every single day on our social media platforms. Mm -hmm. We have a newsletter that comes out on a regular basis and it's a wealth of information, you know, positions that we're hiring for, opportunities for volunteering, scholarships that we are, you know, issuing. So that's something near and dear for me with our law enforcement uh, scholarship. We do have, you know, we encourage young people to pursue careers in law enforcement, be the change. Because when you look yeah. at these jurisdictions and those high ranking positions, mm -hmm. you know, the representation really isn't there. Yeah. Um, you know, we encourage more diversity with the media partners because the decision makers oftentimes don't look like us. So, you know, yeah. we're taking that proactive approach as well, um, you know, just so we can arm our community with the education um, to help us continue on this mission because we can't do it alone. And, you know, my goal is for us to, um, you know, find everyone and bring them home. And I know we're not going to do that in our lifetime, but someone needs to continue to carry the torch. That's right. And we're also offering two fellows. We're offering a fellowship and it, we're giving away $10,000 to two students, HBCU students. Okay. So, you know, someone needs an internship this summer for journalism, communication, social media, please go to our website, get the information and apply for the fellowship. Plus the stipend. I mean, how cool is that? When I was in college, I, <laughs> right. you know, I would <laughs> jump on something like that. Right. You know, right, so right. Parents, if you have, you know, a child or children at an HBCU majoring in communication, social media management, please apply for the fellowship. And for that the is stipend. so good. Oh, yes. Apply. <laughs> yes. I have to post that. Definitely gonna have to, um, to post that um, about the scholarships and stuff. That is. We'll send it to you so you can share. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, send it to us. And you all, we can, we need to get our shirts. Y'all see us yes. wearing our shirts. Wearing our shirts. Yeah, yeah. So good. <laughs> right. yes. get, get your shirts. Get your shirts so you can yes. get conversation started. They'll be like, what's that mean? Yeah. I don't like that color. What's it going on? And you'd be yeah. like, you can get one too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you, know, you know something? Let me the, the shirt that you're wearing, Angie, you know, because Natalie and I we have all the shirts and we were doing an interview one day and for a parent to see that her child's name was right. on the shirt. I mean, she was so filled with emotions because she was like, oh, my goodness, you all are on national. And I see my daughter's name, you know, yeah. on your shirt. And it just means so much. And again, we need for everyone to know their names. Yeah. Out here. That's mm -hmm. right. Say their names. Say their names. Yes. Oh my I God. Had, and, you know, I when it comes to um, stuff, I'm like creative and got like I have an idea um I don't want to say it on here but I'll um when we get off I'm gonna say it to you all and I feel like this would help um start a conversation and it would definitely help um get your mission and and what you're doing get it out more um okay yeah yeah, yeah I'm excited oh, okay. yeah. we're excited when to hear and I saw the shirt I was like Oh my, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. We got her. In <laughs> yeah, we, do. we got something. Cause I'm over here thinking, I'm like, yeah, this, this, this. Yes. 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 <laughs> so, yes. Founders of white and missing. Huh? Yeah, you know, anytime, awesome. anytime you're doing something good and something positive, you know, somebody, the enemy is going to try to come in. Um, it's so yeah. It's yeah. So <laughs> what the person put is like whatever. Listen, we get it all the time, I but our mission do. is to bring awareness to an under, you know, underserved community. That's right. We're not going to deter from it. That's um, right. We are not trying to dishonor anyone or any family, That's but right. we're definitely going to fight for our own because right. they're not getting 
the media coverage. That's You're right. not getting the law enforcement assistance. So we can, you know, have these debates. But what about everyone else? We're not talking about everyone else. We're talking yeah. about 40 yeah. percent of all persons missing our That's right. And right. if you feel that there is something that you need to start, go right on ahead and start it again. Yeah. If yeah. there is a problem in order to correct the problem, you have to be willing to be the solution. That's right. Amen. That's right. And whenever you're going in the right direction with something positive, something that's making an impact, you're going to have opposition. And I know you all have faced it in 14 years. So the fact that that comment and, and the person is, is on there. I want to say thank you for watching and supporting. Um, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you for supporting um, because you all have just scratched the surface of where you all are going. That's Amen. what it is. That's Amen. right. Yeah. Let's keep going. It takes yeah. a village, and you got a strong village. Yes, you do. Yes, yeah. And no one is formed against us shall prosper. So I'm, I'm, there you go. I'm more. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know. It only makes you fight harder. <laughs> yes. What they say, all those bricks that you throw at me, I'm going to use it as a platform to get to the next space. There you right. go. That's it. <laughs> That's right. And I'm yes. going to... Um, Block the user. There you go. So I blocked the person. Um, yeah. They're probably yeah. in our inbox, but it's all good. Look. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. But thank you, two ladies. Thank you all again for just using yes. the platform to help us, you know, to amplify, you know, our missing. Because again, this matters, you know, yes. our community matters. And, you know, discussions such as this and just using social media for the right reasons you know yeah. we always say social media is a blessing and it's a curse you know yeah. it's a blessing yeah. to get the information out there but again yeah. the predators are utilizing it to lure you know our children into this underground of you know human trafficking so yeah. thank you for using your platform to help us find us yes uh, thank you. Yes, we appreciate you taking the time out. And yes. um, I said before, you all are always welcome here. Yes, Whatever are. it is that you have going on, if we haven't already seen it, make come on back and you know, let's talk about it. We're yes. going to make sure that you know we're posting, reposting, and everybody, uh, uh, let's talk about a family. We are going to get involved as well. See something. Yes. Say something. That's right. Follow and like and follow all of the platforms. Okay. Yes, right. Everywhere. And I yes. said everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Go make sure that you like and you tag and you follow. Right. Yeah. And before we go, um, you all are talking about elected officials. We have a really good friend that I think would be good to connect you all with. Um, she's in Florida, but she's running for a judge. Um, in Broadwood mm -hmm. County, Florida. I think it's Broadwood County, Florida. Yeah. Um, and she is all about, um, you know, helping our community. And I think it would be really good to um, connect you all with her because of where she's going and where she's already at. Um, yeah. So definitely we'll connect you all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And please send that idea. We look forward to yes. learning about it. And as soon as we finish, um, we hang okay. up. We love you all. Thank you all for watching. <laughs> But you all stay. But family, we do. We absolutely love you. Um, you know, we could talk all night about this. Yes. Um, but we will um uh, make sure we're gonna have them back on when they're ready. Yes. Um, but it has been a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Yes. Make sure, right? Make sure that you're going to go. There is the website. Yes, uh, check it out. Get a t-shirt, donate time, um, volunteer, donate. Go ahead, go to the website and do that, please. And watch the documentary as well. And get yeah. the book. Find us. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 We're going yes. to call me the next time, Angie, you and I. That's right. Call me, girl. Call me. <laughs> all right, family. We will see you all yes, you uh, can next, week at, uh, ne next week, 7 o'clock. Yes. Peace out, Bye, family. <laughs>